If you're a leader on this team and you make money on this team, then you're accountable to the media. It's not Noah Gregor's job. <laughs> it's not David Kampf's job. No offense to them. No, nobody really cares what they have to say anyway. Yeah, I was going to ask, were there microphones in their face? I'm sure there wasn't. <laughs> because here's the thing. The Leafs don't allow you in the dressing room the way they used to. Now they bring them out. Hey, uh, hey, David, uh, you finally scored after like 50 minutes. Uh, why did Keith uh, decide to immediately put you on the ice? <laughs> we'll get to, we'll get to that. <laughs> and I just so I want to be out, I want to be out front of this. I am completely so disappointed in both of those two players for not coming out and taking accountability for the team that they are part of the core five of. Now, it really is a core five. Adam, I mean, they, they're probably, uh, you know, sick of, of saying it. So what what they could have done and like the Leafs have the budget to have done this. What they could have done is instead of uh, having to say any words at all into a microphone, just hold an iPad in front of your face with every end of season press conference you've done since 2017. It's the same. A compilation getting increasingly yeah. more depressed, but also saying the exact same damn thing. Jesse, I just sent you a quote and it's uh, a video quote. Uh, it's on text. Do you mind? Bringing yeah, it? the Sheldon Keith one. Yeah, is that yeah. Can we Let's, bring this? Well, not oh. the one you sent because this uh, not with the graphics on it. Oh, from okay. That network. Oh, was there graphics? Let's, on? Let's do this one. Apologies. Yeah. Here we go. Um, Mitch Marner has been stealing money from from the Toronto. We're Marner. getting into the Mitch Marner thing okay. later, but I okay. wanted to. I need to. <laughs> if we're that, talking about I him, not I talking think to the, the media, the, are we talking about that, or are we doing Keith? We we will we will <laughs> we're talking to the media right now. We'll get into the performances and the game, but I I wanted to set the tone mm -hmm. because Keith got out and talked in front of the microphone. Sure. Matthews got out and talked in front of the microphone. Matthews, again, looking like a character from Corpse Ride. He looks like way. he's going to die out. He's Dude, exhausted. We're going to find out something is horribly wrong with that guy. The 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 tone of his uh, of like the skin under his eyes. Uh, he looks pallid. He looks like he's lost weight, too. Yep. Like a lot of weight. I'm, ne I'm Nylander, worried for the guy. Nylander spoke. Tavares spoke. Matthews spoke. Keith probably spoke for his last time as the head coach. Oh, yeah. For your team's perspective, what was the biggest challenge generating offense? Well, it's, I mean, they're a very structured team. You know, they're, they do a very good job through the neutral zone and they yep. protect their net as well uh, or better than most, most any team in the NHL. And there was, they were content to do that. You know, they were content to do that. It gets, you know, it's, it's very evident. Teams play the Leafs, they, 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 they set up the game for the Leafs to beat themselves. And uh, what a face to uh, I thought we did that in game three and four. We beat ourselves with how we played it at home. He's right. I thought in games uh, one and two uh, parts of one, but um, parts of one were like three and four, but game two, certainly and uh, five and six. The way we played, that's that's a way that can win um, and, and did win you know, three of the games in this series uh, and didn't beat herself. What does he mean by that for a second here? What does he mean by, if you, you said in there, Steve, you agree with what his summation of it was, especially mm -hmm. in games three and four. And I think Leaf fans on the whole get that feeling and have had that feeling for a better part of a decade, but couldn't necessarily always put it into words. What does he mean? They, I, I mean, the Leafs took a lot of penalties. They didn't get very many saves. But one thing that I've said from game one of the series, and I said from the beginning of game seven too, game one of the series, I remember being like, Simone Benoit's had a lot of the puck, like offensively. And I think it's because, like, it's nothing against him. Like, he was making the right play at the time, but it's like the Bruins are funneling it to him and they're letting him have it. Game seven, the same thing happened. And then the Bruins didn't give up their zone. Never gave up the, you know, they made life very difficult in the neutral zone. Never gave up their blue line. But when they did, it was always just hogging the wall. And it's like handed off to Tavares, especially on the power play, hugging the wall. And it just felt like the Leafs feel nice and comfortable and nice and hugged in tight playing on the perimeter. And the Bruins were like, 
you go ahead, buddy. You go right ahead. We're going to we're going to let you have the puck. Your possession numbers are going to look really good, like time with the puck in the offensive zone. It's going to look good. It's going to look like you're in And then your game. advanced stats staff might say, "Keep doing it." <laughs> I don't I don't think no. I don't think No, so, no. But. And and I will say this, uh, the, uh, the like analytics staff for competent NHL teams know that that's all bullshit. They know that that's all right, bullshit. which is why you should pay you should be careful with the type of stats that are publicly available because they're so based on things like that and they they don't tell you anything. Yeah. They really like, don't tell you much. It's it's important to have the information, but um it's it's a gift to explain it. And you know, just in conversations I've had with team staffs and you can be like, "Oh, it's Steve Dangle. He doesn't oh, okay, whatever you got to tell yourself." I, I've spoken to these people. Um, but it, it takes a really competent, smart team to be able to explain it. Leafs have a good staff. Like they know that that's all bullshit. And what, what I see in Sheldon Keefe's face there, I know a lot of people want this guy fired. Um, I see a frustrated guy who's like, I've told them over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. I've told them over and over again, get pucks in the net, get to the front of the net. The amount of times in this series, the Leafs had the puck in the corners or behind the net or along the half wall. And there's no one in front for the person with the thing. Domi standing there with the puck like Bueller. No, the only guy on the team who was consistently in front of the net, trying, falling over himself hilariously. God love him. And I hope he stays. I doubt he does. Tyler Bertuzzi. Every game he's fighting like, a, like a, he, he's like, he's like, if they took Michael Pozzetta and they were like, what if he was an all-star? <laughs> like, yeah. like just yeah. a rabid animal. He's obviously got a lot more high end there. Um, but just a level of fuck it to his game that you need in these situations. And he was good for the Leafs. He had four points. He had four points. And he, he also games. got into Brad Marchand's face a lot. Oh, that's very valuable. Really yeah. helped neutralize him um, when he wasn't in the box. Um, helped neutralize a lot of guys. Um, he softened the Bruins up pretty nice for, for Florida. Um, a few guys did, but Jim Montgomery and the Bruins were content to just, you go ahead, buddies, you guys handle it along the perimeter. How many times did the Leafs throw it into the slot and they got a rebound and it went in? Never. How many times? Well, I think series? Domi got one. Domi in game two. Domi got one. I remember that. Domi in game two. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. The rest of them were off the rush. I think that's it. Well, and and like, what are the ones off the rush? Tavares goes, screw it, I'll do it myself in overtime. Mm -hmm. You had the setup from Martin Denies. Martin Denies, which is a miraculous play you, that you're going to get once or twice a series. And you get three Nylander goals that way, I think. Well, there they're okay. The so there was Nylander last night. There, there was, the was a breakaway from Nylander. And uh, Nylander scored by floating it on, and it goes in off a knee. Jesse. Yeah. There's a tweet you had about um, the amount of goals scored. I, I promise you we're going to get into breaking up the game. Here, mm -hmm. but you're, here uh, uh, oh, I just, okay. I just yeah. want to put a bow on the Sheldon. Yeah, the, sure. The Sheldon sure, sure. stuff. I yeah, want to just, opinion on that, too. Yeah, just because uh, this is just a wonderful tweet. It's very funny, and I think it's a good analysis of the Leafs from someone who didn't have a dog in the fight in this series. Uh, from Japer's Rink, they cover the Washington Capitals. <laughs> Regarding Keefe's quote, um, besides this being in the Just Fire Me Hall of Fame, <laughs> which is a great opening to a tweet. Besides this being in the Just Fire Me Hall of Fame, it speaks to what I've been saying, RE coaching forever. You can win a ton of regular season games with high-end talent advantage because teams aren't planning uh, game planning you much. Playoffs are different. Very Boudreaux caps. 